Okay, my name is Ben Larson. I'm on the Wilmer Human Rights Commission. In May, we held a meeting with local law enforcement in regards to immigration and customs enforcement and local policing. Um, the Human Rights Commission felt that that information was imperative to get that out to the community. Uh, so today, that is a result of that. Uh, today, we have Jim Felt and Sheriff Hartog, and I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves. Well, hi there, my name is Jim Felt. I'm the Chief of Police for the City of Wilmer. I've been with the city for a little over 27 years, uh, serving as a patrol officer, um, a uh, detective, uh, sergeant, captain, and now chief. Hello, my name is Dan Hartog. I've been with the Sheriff's Office a little over 36 years, 35 years, and I have served as a dispatcher, a patrol deputy, a detective, chief deputy, and have been sheriff of Kanduag County for uh, my, my 15th year. Good. So the questions I'll be asking today are from the Human Rights Commission, and then uh, the community also submitted questions at that meeting, so it's uh, sort of a jumbled up of those questions. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, so what is the city's relationship to ICE? You know, for the, the city, we the relationship we have with ICE is that it is a federal law enforcement agency, and we cooperate with law enforcement agencies from other areas, including uh, the federal government. Um, we don't have any regular meetings with them. We don't have uh, any regular information sharing sessions, but if they request information from us, we provide it. And also, if we request assistance from them um, or uh, have leads or something, we will provide it to them. Good. Uh, what is the county's relationship to ICE? Uh, the, re the relationship that we have, and we generally work with them uh, on the jail end of our uh, operation in the sheriff's office, where if uh, you know people are brought into the jail for committing some type of offense, they're being booked in. And at that point, uh, we ask them a question. We ask a question if they're a U.S. citizen. And uh, if they're not, we then uh, contact ICE and uh, verify, try to verify who these people are because they do use a lot of different aliases. And uh, just to find out for sure, for sure who they are, if there are uh, any other type of legal issues with the person in regards to criminal matters. And uh, so that's where the Sheriff's Office, we deal with a, uh, a lot of those issues. Okay, um, I'm gonna ask a scenario question here. So if an office, officer has pulled a car over for a valid reason like speeding, and the driver pulls out identification with a document issued by the person's nation of origin, such as the driver's license, passport, or matricula consular, which is a consular issued document, result in a higher level of scrutiny than a Minnesota photo ID or other photo identification document. You know, in a case like that, speaking for the police department, the, uh, if the person is the driver of the vehicle and it's some type of driving offense that they're pulled over for, that's, uh, we don't pull over people based on uh, the, their skin color, their perceived race, anything like that. But if it's a driving violation, we would attempt to um, see if they have a driver's license either in Minnesota, another state, or another country. We do honor uh, driver's licenses even if they're from a different country. Um, with that, we have to verify the documents that they have to make sure they're legitimate. Now, we're very familiar with dealing with Minnesota documents, some other states. When it comes to other countries, uh, that can be difficult to verify if it is a true document or not. So it may take some time to work through that, but uh, we do honor those other documents. Okay. And with the sheriff's office, it's the same thing. Um, you know, we don't pull people over just because of their skin color and, and race uh, that way or gender. Uh, we just, any document that we're giving, we're given, we want to make sure the documents are legitimate. So uh, um, same with the Minnesota driver's license. You look at it to make sure that it's legit uh, and uh, any other type of documents. We just want to make sure that whatever they're giving us, it's, it's now counter counterfeit or uh, something that uh, obviously uh, they shouldn't be having. Okay, interesting. Um, do officers ever contact ICE during traffic stops? No, that would be very uncommon and I'm not aware of any situations where that's happened. No, we don't do that in the sheriff's office. Okay. Um, does the city or county detain individuals on ICE holds, which means where, that's where ICE asks our law enforcement agency to hold a person after they should be released for additional time to allow ICE to come to, to come take custody? No, as far as, and like I explained before, that's where we deal with a lot of that in the jail, where somebody's be, being booked in on a crime. Um, and uh, ICE, they'll ask, they have their 48 hour detainers. Uh, we do not honor those. Uh, we do let ICE know uh, 
when that person is getting out of uh, jail and if they do want that person for some type of uh, matter that they're investigating, then uh, they are told to come to the, be at the jail at, on this date and that's when the person's being released. Sure, and that's public information, correct? Correct, yep. Okay, so you don't hold anyone? Nope. Um, do we deputize certain law enforcement officers to enforce immigration laws? No, we do not. No, we don't. Okay. Do we have an ICE detention contract where ICE pays the jail to hold immigrants in detention during deportation hearings? Uh, we do. There is something that uh, is found uh, recently is that we do have a contract that was signed back in 2001-2002 where uh, that was prior to uh, myself being sheriff and uh, um, where they uh, be authorized to hold individuals in our jail, the ICE holds that way. And currently uh, ICE has contacted us and to see if we're still interested in doing that. And the county attorney is uh, currently looking at that contract to see if it is uh, valid yet. And uh, so at this point, uh, we are not holding anybody, but in the future, that could be a possibility. Okay. Um, do you send out ICE alerts where ICE is alerted when a particular person is released from custody so ICE can come get them? That we just talked about a little bit, yeah. went over that a little bit. Um, and uh, like I said prior, uh, we don't hold anybody on the 48 hour forms or, or detainers, um, but we do, we do let them know when they're, when they're gonna get out of jail and uh, then it's up to them to be here. Okay. Um, do you allow ICE in the secured area of the jail without a warrant or enact procedural protections for immigrants in, in the jail so they can refuse to be interrogated by ICE agents? Uh, ICE is like any other federal law enforcement agency. Um, you know, they're, they're a law enforcement agency. If they have a reason to be in the jail, and uh, obviously we don't allow them to violate anybody's constitutional rights. Yep. So they, they are allowed in jail if they have a reason to be there and uh, to do whatever they have to do underneath their, uh, for their job. Okay. Um, do you allow your officers or employees to inquire into immigration status or place of birth? You know, it's not standard questioning to, uh, to allow something like that, but if it's part of a focused investigation where it's pertinent to the case, maybe it's uh, dealing with forged documents or um, identity theft or something like that, where it is a, a pertinent part, we would, uh, officers, uh, it would be proper for them to ask those questions at that time. Okay, and would that be only if someone committed a crime? You know, it, if you believe a crime has been committed, that would certainly be an appropriate time to ask that. You know, if, uh, and um, um, also, you know, and just uh, gathering the information on, on the crime from, uh, it could be victims or that type of thing too. It, it would be the focus of the investigation would be on the suspect there for those type of questions. Okay. And with the sheriff's office, it'd be the same thing. You know, if we're investigating a crime, obviously we're trying to find out who this person is, what's going on with them. And, and uh, I mentioned earlier in the program, talked about, uh, you know, when you're brought into the jail, the, if you're a U.S. citizen, and the reason we do that is, and we don't ask immigration status or place of birth, we ask if you're a U.S. citizen, and we do that because uh, under the law, we have to uh, ask that person that so uh, that we can notify their consulate from whatever country they're from, or if they want us to notify their consulate, so if they want some assistance uh, with what's going on with them in the legal procedure and that sure. type of thing. So we do that just as a matter of um, allowing the, uh, the individuals to, to make sure they have some type of representation. Okay. Um, do officers have any specific detailed training in the area of immigration? You know, it's um, dealing specifically with immigration, it would be fairly limited. Um, you know, we do get a lot of training uh, in cultural diversity and um, dealing with people that may not speak the same language and trying to get interpreters or whatever the case might be. Also in identifying documents, whether they may be legitimate or not. Again, we talked about before that the U.S. documents, yeah. uh, Minnesota driver's license is the main, main thing there, but uh, um, we do receive some training in that area. Okay. And same with us. We've had some training in that area uh, in the past. Um, uh, nothing real recent, but uh, we have had some training with that. Okay. Um, what steps have been taken to reduce fear of law enforcement among our undocumented population? 
You know, I think reducing the fear is, is a very legitimate thing. In, in law enforcement, um, our jobs are providing security and the feeling of security. And uh, we certainly want to have be approachable to the public. We want to have people be able to come and talk to us, report if crimes happen to us, that type of thing. So, uh, so to reduce the fear, a lot of it is just getting to know your law enforcement. And this show is a good chance at that, meeting with the Human Rights Commission. Uh, we do a lot of different things with community events where we'll be present and, and approachable or just everyday contacts we try and have positive contacts in the community um, we're involved in different uh, community programs like coffee with the cops where anybody can come sure. to pop with the cops we have lunch with uh, with kids at the schools um, with we go to uh, other special community events we try and recruit officers that are um, you know maybe bilingual or representative of of the community um, we've got a police explorer program that also uh, focuses on young people and people of different cultures so okay. Um, that's some things that we do to try and, and uh, reduce the fear, because the more you know us, the more I th believe people have trust in us. So. Okay. As far as the Sheriff's Office go, obviously we don't uh, work with the immigrants on a daily uh, basis like the police department does, just because the population is more focused right in the city limits of Wilmer, where we're most of our job, a lot of it is uh, out in the county and you know we have over 800 miles to take care of. So uh, we're dealing with a lot of different things out there, but dealing with the, uh, the immigrant population in the community, we, we do different things out there, uh, talks, different community events. Uh, we have our, nine, our communications bus and we take that to different events in the community and, and uh, we work with the uh, young kids with you know how to dial 911 and when you dial 911, sure. what happens. And, and uh, also with the uh, water safety, the unfortunate uh, incident where the two Somalian children uh, drowned. Um, we do go to uh, some of the training uh, and provide water safety talks and uh, help them out with that, working with the, uh, the Y. And so we've been doing some of that. Okay. And uh, trying to build a relationship there and uh, so they, they get to know us and what we're about. Great. Um, how are local law enforcement officers trained in the area of cultural sensitivity? How do they learn about other cultures and what training is provided to them? You know, all, all police officers that come to us that, uh, that we hire receive some initial training. Um, we, those, those are questions that we often bring up in the interviews too, is what sure. kind of background they have in cultural diversity or dealing with people of different cultures or different backgrounds. Um, we try and recruit people that have a good, uh, a good feel for the community and know what this community is about um, you know and then also continuing ed for our officers too uh, you know some recent examples is we had um, a, a member of the Somali Police Officers Association come out and speak to the public and also have some training with police officers in our area and uh, the same with the Latino Police Officers Association brought a group out spoke to the community and to our officers um, so those are those are some things that we we have done to focus on that okay you know, and that's some of the training, same training our officers have gone to, too. So it's uh, generally, you know, if there's a, a training like that, both the Wilmer officers and the sheriff's office officers go to that training and, and uh, get virtually the same training with it. So Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, is the department reflective of minority populations and women? You know, speaking for the police department, no, we're not, but we're trying to be. Uh, some challenges that we face is uh, is trying to recruit minority applicants, whether it be women, uh, people of color, whatever the case might be. We just don't get a lot of people to apply here, even when we recruit heavily for that. Um, we do have uh, you know a Latino police officer working for our department. We have um, I think six women working for our department in different capacities. One woman officer, patrol officer, um, but we have difficulty recruiting. And when we do recruit, those people are recruited heavily from other departments sure. and and sometimes taken from us by uh, by bigger departments with more opportunities or different pay so um, certainly something we look at a big thing that we were trying to counter that with is our police explorer program where it's uh, for young people between 14 and 21 where they can learn about law enforcement potentially uh, for a job in law enforcement and and if they get to know the Wilmer Police Department like the Wilmer Police Department like the Wilmer area maybe they'll come work for us okay, okay great uh, with the sheriff's office, just uh, just a little background. We have 104 employees, and and we, as far as um, women being involved in the sheriff's office, uh, we do have quite a few. We have 31 uh, women that are employed within the sheriff's office, and some of those, like in the jail, uh, three out of four of our uh, 
sergeants in the jail are women, and uh, we also have three uh, female deputies, and one of those is a uh, sergeant. So uh, uh, we do have quite a few uh, women working on staff. They do a great job. And then with uh, minorities, uh, just like Jim said, we have a hard time recruiting uh, those people. Um, and but we just uh, we just hired a Latino that'll be working in the jail. His first day is today, and uh, we also have another one employed down there. Um, we did have a Hispanic officer, but uh, he uh, moved on to another uh, department. And so we try. Uh, it's just a matter of trying to get people to apply and that are uh, qualified for the positions. Okay. Um, how do officers communicate with persons who do not speak English, and how are they sure that that person understands what is happening? Uh, for us in the police department, a lot of the procedures are the same. We work very closely with the sheriff's department here, but uh, for us, we're, we're fortunate to have four uh, officers on our department that are bilingual in Spanish. Um, you know, so if they're available, we will use them. Otherwise, a lot of times what we'll do is we have civilian translators that uh, they're, they're vetted, um, you know, for accuracy and, and uh, reliability and everything where they will translate, either come to the scene and translate directly or come to the law enforcement center or, uh, you know, something like that. Um, if those options aren't available, another one is what's called the language line where we can dial um, up on the telephone. Um, even if we don't know for sure what language the person person is speaking, they're able to help narrow it down and, and get the right interpreter on the phone for us then. And the same thing for the sheriff's office. Uh, we have the dispatch center, the, the jail, where people are being booked in and then uh, out, on the, uh, out on the street. And obviously for the, uh, the dispatchers, when somebody's calling in on a 911 call and they're, they're calling in, they're frantic and they don't know how to speak. Uh, English, it's it's a real challenge for the dispatchers, and we do have the language line in there that they can um, dial up right away and get assistance with uh, knowing what's going on there, or they they work through it the best they can, at least get uh, an officer to an address that they're that they're trying to tell the dispatcher uh, in the jail. Um, Obviously, we want to make sure people that are being booked into the jail understand why they're being um, arrested and being um, housed in the jail. And we have interpreters that, uh, like Jim said, have they've been vetted. Uh, they go through the process and they, we call them in to uh, help explain the booking process to them, why they're being arrested. And uh, out on the street, it's the same thing. We have the language line or we'll call a interpreter out to help. Uh, as far as, you know, from there, it, it doesn't stop there when they go to court. There's also uh, court certified interpreters that are in the court system. So again, they're given uh, that information through an interpreter that way. Okay, great. Uh, what can people do if they feel they were stopped on the basis of their race? You know, the the Wilmer Police Department, along with the Sheriff's Department, we're mandated by post to have uh, different procedures in place for um, allegations of misconduct or or uh, concerns about that. So, um, if someone has a, a concern about that. Um, they can call the police department, email us, stop in, whatever they feel comfortable with, ask to speak to a supervisor. Um, any, in fact, any officer can start the process there, and it's a, uh, it's a complaint process where um, can gather up some basic information on what the, uh, what the issue or perceived issue is. We do a full investigation on it. We notify that person of the results of that investigation, and if there's any disciplinary action that needs to be taken, uh, the, the officers are also held accountable for that, too. Okay. How would someone report that if they you know starting point would be to get a hold of us either by by phone email or stop in and any officer can start the process uh, there's some paperwork that uh, they can send with the person if they want to review it and return to us for a for a formal investigation there's some real basic questions they need to fill out and some information and then get it back to us okay to start the process yeah the same with the with the sheriff's office it's state so I mean we uh, our li licensing uh, agency uh, says we have to have that in place. And what we would do is, uh, you know, obviously uh, if we have a case where they feel that, uh, you know, we're, we're discriminating against somebody, more than likely we would have another agency come in and do the investigation. Okay. So they w we wouldn't do it uh, internally with another sheriff's, uh, em sheriff's office employee. So we'd have another agency come in and do the investigation so that uh, it would be a neutral investigation that way. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to ask a question that's not on here because I think... Okay. Um, 
So if, if someone reports a crime and the person reporting the crime is undocumented, do they, would they be asked about their status when the police arrive? No, they would not. That, okay. uh, that would have no bearing on their um, reporting a crime, and we encourage people to, to report any crimes or, sure. or anything there. We don't want that to be a barrier for anyone. So they have nothing to worry about. Correct. Right. Okay, great. Um, how are the police and sheriff's department working to improve the relationship with the Latino community? How can we work on this with you as a community? You know, for us, um, we want to improve relationships with the community as a whole. Um, you know, not just the Latino community, but we realize that there can be certain avenues that can can increase. Uh, you know, the, the the building of trust there in in the Latino community. Some things that we do is we try and be involved in a lot of different community events. We try to have officers that are personable. So when you just have casual contacts with them on the street, you know, whether you're standing next to them in line at the the convenience store or whether uh, you know it, it happens to be a traffic stop that uh, you know you're treated with our core values of you know uh, service professionalism integrity respect and trust um, our officers I think are we recruit them for those purposes we continually train for that um, you know but we want to gain people's trust through through just our day-to-day -day contacts again we've got some special programs like our lunch with the cops at the schools the pop, pop with the cops coffee with the cops um, you know where it's just a chance for people to get together and and uh, um, get to know each other our police explorer program that we talked about another good opportunity to, to build uh, relationships in the community and, and trust there and uh, you know um, we also want to continue to try and recruit uh, people of uh, people of color minority members women in the community too as as police officers so sure. those are some ways that that we want to focus on that yeah and uh, like I stated earlier the Wilmer Police Department works a little closer with the community that way because they're right here where we're more on the uh, outside the city limits, but uh, us too, I mean, we want to continue a relationship that we have working with them in the community at different community events. And uh, that's all minorities. And uh, as, as always, uh, our doors are open to at the law enforcement center. And if, if uh, people have questions, concerns, uh, we're always willing to sit down and listen and uh, see what their concerns are. Great. Uh, before we close, do you guys have anything you want to add at all? You know, I guess for, for us, um, if anybody has any questions, concerns, comments, uh, we always welcome them. We always want to try and better ourselves, learn more about the community, what the needs might be, that type of thing. They can number of different ways to get a hold of us. Um, our uh, main number is 320-235-2244. Uh, That'll get you a dispatcher 24 hours a day, and they can route the call to the correct person. Otherwise, our public email is police at wilmermn.gov. Or we have our own Facebook page. Uh, we welcome messages or just people to view our Facebook page and see what's going on with the Wilmer Police Department and the community there. Sure. Yeah, and again, for the Sheriff's Office, if they have any questions, concerns, they can, they can contact me directly. Um, direct, my direct dial is 214-6700, then extension 3301. And um, email, uh, they can email me at 3301 at co.candyohi.mn.us. Uh, glad to take their questions, and uh, like I said earlier, our doors are always open, and uh, if they have any questions, to uh, please stop in and talk. Hey, thank you. Uh, this has been a discussion with Chief Felt and Sheriff Hartog. We hope that it dispels um, any fears in the community. Uh, thank you.